Hello and welcome to Mr Tompkins EdTech. With two papers down and one to go, many of you have been asking about my predictions for topics likely to come up in paper three. So I thought I'd make this quick series of videos compiled from questions covered in my practice papers and past paper walkthroughs. In each video, I've taken one topic I think is a dead cert to come up on paper three and created a compilation of all the questions I recorded on just that one topic. So on to vectors. ABCD is a parallelogram. We know that ABE is a straight line and AB to BE is in the ratio of 3 to 2. So AB to BE is in the ratio of 3 to 2. So B to E is going to have to be a fraction of A to B then, isn't it? So if I take A and I divide it by 3 and I times it by 2, then it means that B to E is going to be 2 thirds of A. It also says that B, C and E, D inter intersect at F. I'm sure we're going to have to use something to do with that a bit later on. But first off, we just need to show that, or to work out the vector E to D. So here's E down here and here's D up here. So with vectors we need to go along routes that we know about. So from getting from E to D I'm gonna to have to go this way along here and up there. Okay that's the route I need to go. So let's work that out then. E to D is going to be e to a plus a to d and we know that e to a is going to be minus two thirds of a minus another a plus b so how many a's is that then I've got minus two thirds and another minus one so that makes minus five thirds altogether so it's going to be B minus 5 thirds of A. OK, let's go on to the next part then. Deduce that E to F, also oh, deduce E to F in terms of A and B. So where's E to F? OK, now looking at this triangle here, we can see it is similar to this large triangle. So the ratio of the bigger triangle is 5 to 2 because this was 2 thirds look and then from here all the way along to here was 5 thirds. So the small triangle is in a ratio, uh, or the small triangle to the big triangle is in a ratio of 2 to 5 which means that this side here is going to be 2 fifths of B. So from B to F, that's going to be 2B over 5. So then E to F is going to be minus 2 thirds of A plus 2B over 5. So E to F is going to be, we say what, 2b over 5 minus, what was it? 2 thirds of a. Question 24 is a question on vectors. We're told that AED is a straight line. Uh, we're told that uh, vector A to E is A plus 3b and vector E to B is minus a plus b. So work out the vector a b. So that's what we need to do. So where's a, where's b? Okay, we need to work out uh, this line here then in terms of our given vectors a and b. So we know about this root. Okay, so 
let's say that a to b is equal to a to e plus e to b. So vector a to e we're given as vector a plus 3b and then e to b is minus a plus b. So collecting up like terms we can see that those two cancel each other out and I'm left with 3b plus b which is 4b. So 4b is the answer. Okay question 24b also e to d is a third of a to e and d to c is minus one third of a. Prove that EC is parallel to AB. Okay, so E to D is a third of A to E. E to D is a third of A to E. So this is E to D is a third of A to E. So if this was three parts, then this one must be one parts. Okay, uh, and then what else we got? D to C is minus one third of A. D to C is minus one third of A. Okay, now what do we need to do? We need to prove that E to C, e C is parallel to A, B. So we need to show that E to C is parallel to a to B, you need to show these two lines are parallel. Okay, now if two lines are parallel, then their vector form, one of their vector forms should be a multiple of the other. So we basically we need to find E to C, uh, and then we can need to compare it to A to B and see if they are, if one's a multiple of the other. So we can work out what the vector E to C is by going up here and then down here. So we know that E to D is a third of A to E and we've been given what D to C is so that should be fairly straightforward then shouldn't it? So E to C is E to D plus D to C. So E to C is E to D plus D to C. And we said that E to D is a third of A to E and we know that D to C is minus one third of A. A to E is A plus 3B. So that's equal to a third of A plus 3b uh, so removing the brackets so that's going to give me a third of a a third of 3 is 1 so that's just plus b minus a third of a and those two clearly cancel out and that leaves me with b which is actually quite an easy vector question Okay, so we can see that uh, E to C is B, and we already know that A to B is 4B, so we can clearly see that one is a multiple of the other. We just need to write that done, down somehow. So let's say A to, uh, keep forgetting my letters here, A to B we said is equal to 4B, which is 4 lots of e to c so it must be parallel okay uh, question 23 is a vectors problem I'm told that a f e is a straight line and a to f to f to e is in the ratio of 3 to 2 so for every 3 we've got here we've got 2 down there 
Okay, uh, we are told that DE is parallel to CF. So DE is parallel to CF and DE equals two lots of CF. DE is two lots of CF. Okay. Okay, I haven't added that onto the diagram yet, so I'm just going to highlight it for myself to know that, to remember that I haven't used it. Okay, so work out D to E in terms of A, B, and C. Uh, D to E is oops, is this length here. Now, in order to go from D to E, Now, at first glance, this is a little bit tricky because we normally have to work out things in terms of roots that we know about. And so if I want to go from D to E, uh, well, I don't know what D to E going directly is. I don't know what this root is uh, because the only thing I've got it is A. Uh, and there's no other route that I can take in order to get from D to E along things that I do know about. However, we were told in the question that D to E is a multiple of CF. And I can work out what C to F is using roots I've been given. If I start at C, I could go this way and then this way and then this way. I've got no nothing on A to F, but I have been given this ratio here, which I can use in order to work out that section. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work out C to F first by going around that green route. And then I'm going to scale it up to find D to E. Okay. So first off, let's find C to F. C to F is going to be C to B plus B to A plus A to F plus B to A plus A to F. Now, C to B is easy. It's given as 3C. B to A is easy. It's, uh, well, the arrow is going the wrong way, isn't it? So that's minus 2b. Minus 2b. And then a to f. Now, we know that e to f, this bit down here, is a. And that a to f and f to e in the ratio of 3 to 2. So if I take a and I divide it by 2 and I times it by 3, I shall get this vector here. So this vector here is going to be a divided by 2 and times by 3. It's going to be 3a over 2. Okay, and again I'm going to go against the arrow, so it's minus. So it's going to be minus 3a over 2. Minus 3a over 2, like that. So that's the vector CF. Now the vector DE, we're told, is two lots of CF. So DE is two lots of C to F, which is two lots of that expression I just found. So multiplying everything by two, I'm going to get 6C minus 4b minus 3a. That's my vector d to e. Question 23, and we're on to vectors. Is b, c, d a straight line? Show your work and to, to support your answer. Now, if you want to show that uh, three points are collinear, which means they lie in a straight line, what you want to do is to find that the vector from one to the other, so let's say that is vector a, then uh, you, what you want to show is that this one is going to be some multiple of the same vector. Okay, uh, And if you can show that that is the case, then you can say that they're collinear. So what we need to do is to find this vector, and we need to find this vector, and we need to show that one is a multiple of, of the other. Okay, let's see if we can do that then. So vector b to c, what's that then? Well, we can get from b to c by going up here and down here. We've got to get travel along routes that we know. We don't know anything about the direct route, but we know those two. So we can use it to work it out. 
So B to C is B to A plus A to C. And B to A is 5A minus 2B. And A to C, well, we're going against the arrow here, aren't we? So that's subtract, not plus. So minus 3A plus B. OK, so then just collecting like terms then. I've got 5A minus 3A, which gives me 2A. And I've got negative 2B subtract B. So negative 2B take away another B is negative 3B. Just take care with, with minus signs and brackets. So that gives me 2A minus 3B for B to C. OK, now let's see if we can find C to D. So C to D. We could also find B to D. That's another way of doing it. And again, they would have to be uh, multiples of each other. So C to D is 3A plus, uh, well, let's go from C up to A, and then from A down to D. OK, so we're going, oh, I've still got my pink highlighter, this way and then this way. OK, so 3A plus B plus 3A minus 9B. They're both positive, aren't they? So that's equal to 3A plus B plus, what was it? 3A minus 9B. 3A minus 9B. So collecting like terms, 3A and 3A makes 6A. And B and minus 9B makes minus 8B. OK. Are they collinear? Well, I don't think so. Now, if they were, so they're not collinear, are they? Uh, so B, C, and D are not collinear. That's the posh way of saying they don't lie in a straight line. As I think I'm going to say that B to C is not equal a multiple of c to d okay or you could write that down in words if you want but yeah it's not a multiple cannot be expressed as a multiple of c to d check out my other predictive topics by clicking on the card appearing here also you can check out my practice paper walkthroughs by clicking on the card here or you can even go through actual past papers by clicking on the card over there. Good luck in your exams and I'll see you next time.